<laughs> Welcome to the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hello, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Thank you so very much for spending a little time with us and raising your health IQ. You know, it is a fact that on the basketball court, you mess around, you get a triple-double. But if you mess around with your diet and you eat a double cheeseburger, you're going to need a triple bypass. My guest today knows a lot about basketball and a whole lot about healthy eating as well. He is known as the vegan coach. He is an assistant coach for the Washington Wizards in the NBA, Mr. Joseph Blair. Welcome to the exam room, my friend. Thank you, Chuck. I'm honored to be here. It's uh, I'm honored. The honor is all mine. Um, I get excited anytime that uh, anybody in the pro sports world kind of crosses paths with the show. I often feel like I'm kind of on my own little island as a sports guy, a guy's guy, uh, eating a plant-based diet, which still has quite a bit of stigma around it. Do you feel isolated in the NBA at all, uh, eating the way that you do and being so vocal about eating the plant-based diet? You know, it's crazy. I really don't feel isolated. If anything, I feel more like a trendsetter. Because I feel like everything's going in that direction and people are really starting to become more knowledgeable about plant-based diets. And we'll have more players, honestly, that are willing to give it a try or that are now vegan as well. You know, we have a handful of players in the NBA. Also, I, I'm starting to uh, meet more and more coaches that are, are vegan that I didn't know just because I've been so vocal about my veganism. And as I said, I think that as mainstream starts moving towards uh, being more knowledgeable about what a plant-based diet is, I think that's going to start really um, exploding in the sports world as well. Uh, and I think it all comes down to marketing as well. Now it's becoming more marketable. There's more products that are plant-based. And as that continues to evolve, evolve and grow, so so will the uh, those that become vegan or follow plant-based diets. You know, it's actually, I hear you say that, and I'm actually not surprised that there are more undercover vegans than a lot of people realize in the NBA, because it seems to me of all the pro sports leagues, the NBA is the most forward thinking of the major leagues here in the U.S. Um, do you kind of see that same kind of correlation there? Uh, I think so. Uh, you know, I think not only that, but I think we're, they have more of a spotlight. You take, you know, most of the, the sports especially in America, uh, you know, there's either a huge number of them or their faces aren't visible. The NBA is the one where there's, you know, there's only 15 people. There's only 450 NBA players, only 30 teams. So, uh, and they're all visible. You know, everyone, everyone can see everyone's face all the time. So I think that that alone puts a different type of spin on basketball in general um, and also makes them more marketable as athletes because you're going to see their faces all the time. So I think that uh, it's also been more progressive than other sports, in my opinion. I, I want to make sure I hit that, in my opinion, just because they have um, spoke out on different issues as well in, in society, whether it be social justice issues or racism issues or whatever it might be. Um, the NBA has always been somewhat trend-setting, and, and um, I give a lot of kudos to the commissioner and just the league itself for being so supportive of giving athletes that voice. And what prompted you to speak out so much in terms of your own diet and what brought you to this plant-based journey now? Uh, you know, going, I'll, I'll answer in reverse those questions. You know, I, when I was, uh, it all kind of started for me when I was finished my last year of college, I didn't really have any funds. So I went out and bought bulk vegetable or plant, plant veg, more vegetarian items, um, potatoes, bananas, ramen noodles, rice, all these type of things. And I lost a lot of weight and I started feeling better. So through my professional playing career, I maintained being vegetarian for 10 years. And then uh, my last few years, I was pescatarian. But then once I retired, I just felt that I didn't need that same level of health and uh, nutrition for some reason, which looking back, I recognize how idiotic I was to think so. And I um, started eating everything again. Uh, about seven years into that, uh, my girlfriend at the time called me one day and said she just saw some documentary and she's just disgusted the way they treat the animals and she's going vegan. And I said, you know, I love you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to do the same. And I stopped cold turkey. And at that same time, I started to become more knowledgeable about veganism as a whole. And um, and once once that started, once I went down that rabbit hole, really understanding what a conscious living really looks like, it changed changed my perspective. And I know now that I will die as at a very old age a vegan and i think that what really made me start to speak out on it is when i started to 
I tell people I was vegan. I've been vegan nine years now. Right, right away, they always say, what do you eat? Just salad and tofu? All you eat is salad and tofu? And I was, what are you talking about? I, you know, I have a plethora of, of foods that I can eat. And I really just started on my use, utilizing my social platform to push out and just show the things I eat. And when I started understanding that people were so surprised that you can actually not only eat well, but eat unhealthy, eat healthy. There's everything you can do on a meat diet. You can do it a plant-based diet as well. And really it's just the, the flavors are, are so different. When people started experiencing that and I got the feedback from that, I, I recognized that it was that I need to step up and speak out. And not only that, but also um, me being the person I am, you know, I'm, I like to believe I'm not what you automatically think when you think a vegan, you know, I'm 6'10", 255 pounds. I work out every day. I'm in really good shape. Uh, at my age, I'm, I'll be 50 in June. So for who I am and what I do, I just thought this, this is a platform that I can get behind. I believe in, and, um, it, it really transitioned from when I was vegetarian thinking about, I just want to be healthy and live longer, which I still do, but also just that conscious living on the other side now where I just truly believe nothing should have to die for me to live. If I can live without causing death, that's a rational decision to make. No doubt about it. And I feel like, you know, I've said this on the show before, it's you get into eating this way for one reason or another, but inevitably it touches you in so many different areas and you, and you just see the, the greatest impact on so many different levels. Um, you said that you were going to be turning 50 here pretty soon. And aside from a little bit of salt in that beard of yours, man, you do not look anywhere near you're getting ready to turn that half century mark, man. Good on you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. I hope I can continue to not look it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. Is it kind of a, a running bit for you in the locker room? Do the guys come up to you and they're like, hey, coach, what would what, you eat today? What, you know, so it gives you an opportunity to continue to shatter that stigma of salads and tofu. Uh, you know, now it's, it's it, they're to the point now, especially the players that have been around me a while. They know that uh Number one, they see me work out all the time. So they don't really, there's nothing they make fun of for sure because um, I do a very good job of taking care of myself. And when I do need to jump in drills or whatever it might be with them, they see that I can still very much hold my own at my age. Um, so it's not really so much that. Now I think that they, they respect it a lot. And what, the one thing I'm very proud of is when they have questions about veganism, what they think about it, or they even, you know, I have one player, every time he goes into a, a a bakery or somewhere he'll ask if they have something vegan just because he's curious to see if they have uh vegan alternatives everywhere he goes and i think that um that alone for me is a big step forward and i just try to get, encourage them as much as i can if you can have one different vegan meal a day or, or i mean a week a month whatever it might be one vegan meal makes a big difference uh health wise and definitely uh, when you we talk about conscious living what it, the impact it has on the, uh, the environment on um, other people and definitely on the animals. And let me ask you this. I mean, just coming into the league, say it's a, it's a kid, you know, put in his time in college, two, three years, whatever the case may be. I'm not even sure if they've even got the one and done rule anymore. I think it was, is it a two year minimum before you can uh, enter the draft? I believe it's still one. Is it? Okay. So you can do, so let's say it's a, it's a young kid, a whippersnapper, 19 years old. Let's say they enter the league and they're already eating a plant-based diet. They've got all the talent in the world. What is the likelihood that that player, in your opinion here, based off of the research and your own experience, what is the opinion that they're going to have a longer prosperous career that's not so injury riddled compared to others who might be eating that traditional diet? Uh, I mean, in my personal opinion, well, let's be honest here. Number one, it comes down to talent and work ethic before it comes even diet. But No if, doubt, if, no if doubt, put, no doubt. If you were put side by side, people to put in the same amount of time and work just as hard, I would honestly believe that you could extend your career three to four years at, at the, a bare minimum just because of the lack of inflammation that your body would have, the lack of high blood pressure. There's so many things that you know you can eliminate by moving to a plant-based diet. You know, One of the things I say all the time when I'm talking about plant-based diets is, you know, there's no cholesterol in vegetables and there's no fiber in meat. So everything designed to clog up your body is only found in meat and everything designed to clean out your body is only found in vegetables. And then typically I always hear the same old, where do you get your protein from? And the first thing I say is, well, when's the last time you've heard anyone go to the doctor and the doctor said, hey, what you really need is more protein in your diet. Everyone typically says none, never. But then when I say, well, when is the last time you've ever heard of someone saying you need more fiber in your diet? I said, well, I do hear that a lot. Well, there it goes. To, is a perfect example. 
And so when I think about a player coming into the league, I just think about my personal body. When I changed to a plant-based diet, the inflammation, the swelling, the soreness that I typically was feeling before that, uh, it was one of the first things that went away. And also the fluctuations of weight. The weight fluctuations went away immediately. And I even say, um, you know, you have that uncomfortable full feeling that some people have when they eat a lot. Uh, mine passes rather quickly where I know when I was eating a uh, – a meat-based diet or including meat in my diet, I should say, that feeling could last well into the next day. For sure. And and I also think about, you know, injuries are inevitable. There's nothing that's going to make you bulletproof on the court or on the pitch or whatever sport you play. I mean, if, you, if you're an athlete, the injury rate inevitably is 100%. But I do think that there's a lot that you can do. You were talking about the inflammation. Uh, with a reduction in inflammation, that can really speed up recovery time, which I would think would be incredibly advantageous to players who are eager to get back out on the court. 100%. And I, I want to say also, you know, as you get older, you can imagine – when you put this wear and tear on your body, we play an 82 game season, not only with the games, but the practices and the travel, you're going to start to feel it just over the course of the season, regardless. So anything you can do to get a leg up on the competition and inflammation is always going to be a big one. That's, you know, especially the, the size of our players that we have now and just the, the mass that they're carrying around. Typically you're going to put some, um, you're going to put some tread on those tires, as I say. So if you can do anything to help, um, lubricate those tires a little bit and, and break, uh, avoid inflammation. It's going to add longevity to your career without a doubt and also really help you to, throughout the season. You ever you throw that challenge out to the guys when you're talking about it? You say, hey, you know, you, you may want to try this if you're nursing an ankle, you're nursing a knee, something like that. This may get you out there at least, you know, a couple of days sooner. Well, it, it, you can imagine they hear it from me all the time when it comes to <laughs> veganism. I, uh, and I'm very quick to say it smells like dead flesh in here when I walk in and they're eating something different. But at the same time, I, you know, I am very much, uh, my veganism is the same way. Uh, I, I'm just as passionate about veganism as I am about religion, but I treat them both the same. I'm not going to always push it on you, but if you ask me about it, I'm going to give you a very straight and long winded probably answer on how I feel on both. So let's talk about uh, kind of a fun topic here. Let's talk about uh, down around uh, Capital One downtown. Do, is there a spot that you like down there that's really got some good plant-based eats that you might hit up before a game? Is there a routine there? Uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm also an intermittent faster. Uh, ah. I intermittent fast every single day. And on game days, it's even uh, a little bit stretched out. I give myself a four-hour eating window. Typically, it's um, on non-game days. It's from 5 to 9. I, I like to eat when the sun goes down, sometimes 4.30 to 8.30. And then on game days, because I love to eat after the games, I will not eat until I actually make myself a smoothie and I pound that down right before I walk out on the court. So if you ever had a game and you see me come out with my, my munching going on, it's because I just broke my fast right before I walked out on the court. But I will say down there around Capital One, there's some uh, great restaurants that I go to. A lot of, not all of them are fully uh, vegan, uh, but Hip City Veg right there across the street from the arena, that's a, a wonderful one. Uh, I actually go to Mi Vida right there. They have these empanadas that I, I just love. Um, also, uh, gosh, what's the, there's a few other restaurants right there around there that, that are they all have great options. So, and then in the DC area in general, you know, there's plant burger. There are most Whole Foods. Um, Elizabeth's Gone Raw is one of my favorite vegan restaurants of all time. I love it to death. Uh, and then also Bubby's Bubby's Burgers, um, Pow Wow. They're all great places. Do you ever hit up uh, Fruitive? That's at City Center. That's not too terribly far away. No, it's actually very close. I've heard wonderful things about it. I, and what's crazy, it has been on my list for quite some time, and I've yet to hit it up. So I'm definitely in Fruitive. Let People, if you're listening and you're watching, believe me, I'm going to be over there pretty soon. If y'all want to hook me up with some, a freebie, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Well, let me get let me give you a free piece of advice when you go. And I tell everybody on the show this. Get the Cacao Pal. You're a smoothie guy. That one will knock your socks off, man. It's the kind of thing that will fill you up. But again, you know, it's not going to bloat you. You're going to feel fine afterwards. But it's a really tasty, really tasty smoothie. So Greg and the gang over at Fruitive will definitely take care of you. And I will shoot him a text personally after the interview to say, hey, be on the lookout for JB. He's coming your way. Yes, uh, please. Yeah, man, I got you. Um, question, though, about your smoothie. So do, do you have a Vitamix in the locker room or do you bring it from home? Because um, 
I, I got the opportunity once to interview a uh, Washington Commanders player, and he actually had a, a smoothie station installed out in Ashburn at the practice facility uh, so he could make his right before and after practice. So what's what's in your smoothie, and uh, where and when do you make it? So, you know, actually, we do have a smoothie station inside of our practice facility and that are available, I think, on game days as well. But I typically always bring my own. Um, one of my main reasons is just because, uh, you know, they – uh, they make smoothies for everybody, and some guys use the whey protein powder. Some guys use whole milk, and once it's in there, I really don't want to. I, I'm always paranoid about it getting mixed with my stuff. Uh, and my my personal smoothie at home. This is like my pregame. I mean, I'm sorry, my game day smoothie when I'm at home. I, uh, I I'm really fortunate that we have a nice fruit station at our practice facility, and I will usually take some fruit from there and freeze it, then use it later. So I have a little cup that I just toss in there. It's pineapple blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, a um, little bit of mango, strawberries, and then I sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top of that. So I toss that in, and then I pour, put some uh, chia and flax seeds on top of there, a little bit of ginger, uh, turmeric powder as well. I have a beet powder I use also, and then I put a scoop of greens, a big scoop of protein in there as well, a little bit of oat milk, water, all in the bullet, blend it all up, and you know that is my my go-to. I drink about half of it pre-game, then the other half I drink at halftime. But it's for me, it's all about when you when I break my fast in particular. I really want to give myself all the vitamins and nutrients my body's been yearning for. You're that really good sparking kick right away. And I would imagine that's got to be like a substantial portion too. I mean, like if, if this is what you're breaking your fast with, that's got to be a big old smoothie. Are you walking in there? It's just like a gallon jug of smoothie deliciousness. I, you know, it's really only about 32 ounces and I drink 16 at a time, but I also will use, will have a, a handful of mixed nuts as well. Just get some good omega threes and fatty, uh, um, good fats in my body as well. And I have my supplements that I typically take. I do have some vegan collagen, some, um, uh, vegan omega-3 as well, um, uh, vitamin B, a vitamin D supplement, which whether you're a vegan or non-vegan and the like, you should take some vitamin D, vitamin C, same thing goes with that as well. And then um, just some Moringa, also, again, great for inflammation. There's different things I take on a daily basis, but I'm pretty religious about my supplementation. You know, my goal is sustainability. I want to see my kids have kids and meet their kids. Man, you know, I think a lot of people are hearing you right now. They're like, I like the idea of fasting, but a four hour window seems like too restrictive and you're breaking the fast with just a smoothie. A lot of people are probably thinking, man, I'm going to be starving if I do, uh, you know, JB's plan here. So, I, I mean, do you ever get hungry at this fast or what else do you cram into this four hour window here to make sure that you're getting everything you need? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I... I... 100% recognize my four hour window is a bit extreme for the normal person. A lot of people that I know that do intermittent fasting, they do a six hour, some do an eight hour. You know, there's some that do a 10 hour. I think it's really just, you need to understand your body and what works for you. It's what this has worked for me. And uh, I feel like I reap the most benefits physically from it. But also, again, I say I break my fast with that. It's not the only thing I have. I just want to make sure and give myself my body enough time to absorb those nutrients before I start putting any other foods into it. Mind you, we just talked about Hip City Veg, which is uh, some vegan burgers. And there's other restaurants, you know, Bubby's Burgers, for example, or Plant Burger, when I go there, I probably wouldn't break my fast with those, but I definitely would include those during my meal time. So I, it's not restrictive in the fact that I think you only need to eat healthy. And I, you know, I think that cheap meals are important for everyone, but also uh, being on a plant-based diet, you can still gain weight, eat unhealthy just the way you could on a non-plant-based diet. It's all about making sure there's um, a good amount of good nutrients, good foods you're getting. You don't eat a tons of processed foods, that's for sure. That goes for either diet. Um, but I, I will say this. I think that if you can start anywhere, just start. That's the big thing. And you'll be amazed at how your body will react and how your body can uh, begin to change and just uh, accommodate your choices, whether it's fasting or your food choices. Um, very quickly, the body's an amazing thing. I'm sure you, you know this as well. Uh, if you start fasting, you get to a point where you're not hungry during certain times. And there are still times I get hungry. And if I'm, if, you know, if I feel like I need to eat, I'll eat. But I think the, the thing the thing about it for me is just, you know, have that certain type of discipline in your life. I believe 
that discipline in anyone's life is the key to success. And if you can discipline your diet, that's one of the hardest things. Once you get a hold of that, there's so many other aspects of your life that will easily bleed into it. And you know what? Let me ask you kind of a, a deep question kind of based off of that. Um, a lot of these guys in the league, players, just phenomenally talented um, and make great decisions on the court. Off the court um, can be a little bit suspect at times. And I'm just wondering, you know, if you can get this discipline with your diet, I've always found that I've had greater mental clarity since I began eating this way. Do you think that it could help bring some other things into focus? And I'm not trying to paint this, uh, Mr. Blair, as a panacea by any stretch of the imagination, but do you think that it could help uh, quell some of the, you know, off court antics and, and ill decision making with some of the younger guys that might need a little bit more maturity? So I think it's broader than basketball. Personally, I made this choice. I, I lived through this choice, as I said before, not just because of the health ramifications, but also conscious living. And I think that's a very key word for what I do and my choices in life. Um, as I recognize that every being has a spirit and they matter, uh, and that includes the animals, how does that not flow into other aspects of my life? It's impossible. So just as I do with um, any of these sentiment beings, I also feel that way my human interactions have changed. I truly have this understanding of how my decisions can affect you or anyone else that might be listening, watching. Uh, how it affects our planet, which affects your children, which affects your children's children. And because of that, right away, I have this different level of compassion in all my interactions with any individual that I meet. Uh, because you truly do understand that their feelings matter, that their, their, uh, whatever trauma they're going through, it does matter. And I think that just because of that, it can change a lot of things that happen, not only on the basketball court with my players, in our world as a whole and we start to really start living consciously and look outside of ourselves and understand the decisions we make the words we use the thoughts we process uh, and the rhetoric that we're spewing really does have an effect on other people that's when everything starts to bloom and flourish and moves in a more positive way so do i think that anyone adopting a plant-based diet could have those like same um side effects i should call them i do think so because i think that at, the, at that point you really have to understand that you're doing something that is not only good for you but for good for everyone around you and once you do that it should flow into and just transmit to every aspect of your life i truly believe that what are some of the more profound transformations you've heard of and people whom you've interacted with uh, who have adopted this this diet and applied this discipline that you're talking about in terms of their health, the way that they eat, and then how other areas of their life then begin to blossom because of that? I think, number one, we'll just talk about physically, uh, and this is something I experienced firsthand. Number one, you're going to lose weight. And, and I will tell people all the time, a lot of people say, I tried it, I lost too much weight, I just I had to stop. Well, first of all, don't freak out. It's what I said before. It's like uh, if you were eating chocolate cake every day for all your life and you stop eating it, your body's going to react. It's going to give it, it's going to be a, whoa, you're giving me a break. I'm going to cleanse out while I have an opportunity before you start stuffing that chocolate cake in me again. And that's the way it is when it comes to the vegan diet. Once you start taking away some of that cholesterol and you're pumping in all that fiber, your body's like, okay, well, before you start putting this cholesterol again, let me try to cleanse myself as much as I can. And then realize, oh, we're going to keep doing this. So it'll apply, it'll even itself back out. You know, I lost right away probably a little over 20 pounds. Then I gained another 10, 12 back almost immediately. And But at the same time, I want to say that I was working out the entire time. I never lost one bit of strength the entire time I was lifting weights. I was running. I didn't lose any stamina, anything. I actually... Um, gain more stamina because I was losing the inflammation and my strength was completely steady the entire time. So I think that's one of the things that I've heard time and time again for be with vegans that have stuck with the diet is, oh, at first you think that what, what's going on in my body, then you realize everything's going right with your body. Your energy levels go up, your clarity goes up, your focus goes up, everything gets much better and, and cleaner. Now, as far as the conscious living, I think that it's really just that understanding. More, more people I talk to, they all, you can't help but to feel that way. Once you really recognize, um, as you start to 
move to a plant-based diet, you really start to recognize and associate what your food really is that's on your plate. They're not chicken nuggets. They're pieces of uh, chicken flesh. They're not a hamburger. That is a, a slab of flesh from a, an animal. Uh, and when you really start to think that way and understand that, it really really changes the way you think and the way you, also your compassion towards those animals. You understand what they're actually going through. And you can't help but to do it when you really open your eyes to it. I think one of the reasons why I know that I'll always remain vegan is also just that I, I will be the first to admit that I was, um, I was, I submitted myself to the propaganda of marketing. I totally 100% believed, you know, I looked at things outside of what they really were. And when I really opened my eyes and realized that that had been, they had been, I don't want to say I've been brainwashed, but I've been brainwashed into believing certain things. I said, Oh, I'm never going to let the, the, the machine that got over on me ever get over on me again. And, uh, you know, I think that that's part of it as well. Just really that association of where, what are you eating? Where does it really come from? What does it really come from? And what all did it go through to get onto your plate as well? It, it's amazing once you start looking through that lens and, and really tracing back exactly where your breakfast, lunch, and dinner came from. That opens so many eyes. It actually makes me like think back to whatever the documentary was that your girlfriend at the time watched that, that made her want to go on uh, the vegan diet. Which documentary was that, by the way? You know, it's what I've been asked this so many times, and I wish I could tell you. But what happened is I clicked on that documentary on YouTube, and uh, I got into a rabbit hole. I, I want to tell you, I spent probably four hours that night just watching everything because I was so blown away by what I had thought uh, a, a true good diet was and the understanding of what a vegan diet can be and what it really is. It was just, it, it truly blew me away. A couple more here. Uh, you've been really generous with your time. Um, there has been uh, talk. Well, matter of fact, plans have been announced to move uh, the Wizards, the Capitals across the water into Virginia. And I'm just curious. I mean, just to generate a few headlines just for S's and G's, as I like to say, uh, which area has the better eats, in your opinion? Do you think it's Virginia? Do you think it's D.C.? Or maybe Maryland, you know, is, is the sneak uh, the sneak yes here. Wh wh who who's, th who's the winner in the DMV, Coach? everybody good man <laughs> good answer good political yeah i'm gonna give you the clap on that one well done sir well done well done have you talked to ted leonsis maybe about putting in a little uh plant-based uh vendor or two uh at the new arena i have not but that's a very good suggestion i know i went to a capitals game um, a couple years back it was my first time ever going into Capital One Arena as a fan. Typically, what's crazy is I've never even seen the up top around where all the concessions are and things. So I was uh, I was excited to go. And I'd never been to a hockey game. So it was a Capitals and it was a playoff game. So the atmosphere, as you can imagine, was amazing. And um, I went in there and I was actually walked around trying to find something to eat for myself. And I had, I had a big thing of tater tots, which was phenomenal by the way uh, by the way that's one of my go-to's if anyone ever takes me to a, uh, a restaurant as uh, french fries and steamed broccoli most every place always has some french fries and steamed broccoli but um yeah i'm hoping that you know with the new arena will come some maybe forward thinking as well with the plant-based uh, as it continues to grow i mean i think that you know one of the things ted is amazing about is he he's he's a forward thinker and i think as it as they begin to build things he's always going to be on ahead of the curve with most everything he always does. So I have no doubt that they'll definitely be able to um, provide services for people like myself that are plant that follow a plant-based diet. I, I look forward to seeing what it's going to look like. Well, look, you know, I'll tell you this much. I was out at SoFi Stadium in LA uh, for an event and uh, the line to get some vegan chili was enormously long and it was delicious so i just want to say uh mr leonsis if you're thinking that something that is vegan will not sell think again the line was crazy you had people coming from the upper levels the lower levels to get to the 200 level to hit this vegan chili spot and it was doing gangbusters so if you build it as they say they will most certainly come. So uh, lobby that, get that message to Mr. Leonsis if you can. Um, let me ask you uh, just a couple of more here. I know that uh, you have interviewed previously to be a head coach and you do such a great job as an advocate, advocating your message, the reasons to eat this way, live your life uh, more cleaner, more holistically. Um, is it lost on you that 
if you get this opportunity to be elevated to the top spot and lead a team as the head coach, that the power, the clout that can come with that to change people's lives as you continue to spread this message, is that lost upon you at all? No, I, I you know, I, I completely understand that. I know with the, the, you know, higher platform comes a bigger reach, right? So, um, but again, as I said, you know, I think that everyone moves at the, at the pace in which they're ready to move. And my job is just to be able to be readily available and able to educate people as they make their journey, uh, whether it be to uh, once a week veganism, once a month veganism, or if they continue decide to make the switch for their for their life. But I think that um, I'm blessed with this opportunity as I am right now, and I think that it's a it's a compound interest thing. It's not just when I became head coach that that would be there, but it's everything I did along the way to get there as a player, as a person, as a man, as a father as a son, you know, whatever it might be, everything brings you to the point which you are in life. And I definitely understand that. And I appreciate that. I've been blessed with a tremendous amount of blessings. And um, I just try to utilize them as much as I can to bless other people's lives as well. Final question. Uh, how, how many teams in the NBA now? The 30 some odd, 20 something? 30. 30, all right, 30 teams on the button, which means that we're in uh, more than two dozen cities here. Uh, which is the most vegan friendly, in your opinion? Where is the easiest place to get a delicious plant-based bite to eat, Coach? Um, as you can imagine, the, the West Coast is a little bit more um, vegan friendly, but I will say um, it depends on the type of vegan food you want to get. New York is amazing. I, New York, as I mean, any kind of food you want, New York City is going to have it. And they have two teams there, so you get to go there uh, double, but then the same goes for L.A. There's two teams there, and they are extremely vegan-friendly out that way. So I think if I was to choose, um, it would be between New York and uh, L.A. There's just, just a plethora, plus they're a huge city, so you're going to run into a lot more uh, opportunities to eat vegan. All right. Fair enough. And uh, next time you're uh, playing the Nets, you're near Barclays. Look for a place called Wild Ginger. I think it's like a mile or so from the arena. That place, the eats there are off the chart. So Definitely. good. Definitely. So good. I, you know, it's interesting. I do a um, on my social media, which I think is right there. Yep. Right below your name yeah. there. there At Mr. Right Joseph there. Blair. Um, I do a, uh, a little thing I call the vegan diaries. As I travel around the NBA, I go to different restaurants. And, and this all started again because people ask me, what do you eat, tofu and salad? I was like, are you kidding me? Some great things, great restaurants. Let me highlight some of them and show you what I eat at the same time. So I do these vegan diaries as I travel around the league. I go to all these different restaurants just to um, highlight the restaurant and highlight the amazing food, the amazing vegan food that's available. And not all, all vegan restaurants, some are just where they have amazing vegan options. But obviously, I love to go to try to support those vegan restaurants a little bit more. So if you're ever curious and you're in the NBA city and you want to know where you should go, check out my page. I'm sure I have something posted from that city where I went or just hit me up. I'm happy to always share information. Every NBA city, I have two to three places that I know I love to go to and I'm always exploring for more. So if you're a vegan place in one of those NBA cities, let me know too, please. For sure. And look, you know, we've got more than 100 million streams now on YouTube, 20 million audio downloads of the podcast. So I'm sure there are NBA fans who are listening to this right now. They're going to be looking for when the Wizards are coming to town and they're going to come see the vegan coach and uh, probably give you a few tips at Mr. Joseph Blair on places that you might want to try in their fair city as well. I would love it. Love it. All right, Coach Joseph Blair, the vegan coach. I greatly appreciate your time. This has been a real treat, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chuck. I really appreciate you. Thank you for continuing doing what you're doing. I think just spreading word on just health and wellness is amazing. Continue to do it. If your health IQ was a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.